Since I was a kid, I've loved the Pokemon series, but it's hard to not feel like the franchise has gotten too big and too complex in some regards. We're now at over 800 Pokemon, and building a decent competitive team requires knowledge of Pokemon abilities, held items, and how to get the best movesets. While I personally appreciate that complexity on some level, it'd be nice to go back to the basics, you know? That's kind of where Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee come in. Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee are retellings of the original entries in the franchise, Pokemon's Red, Blue, Green, and most specifically, Yellow. You're a kid leaving on your first Pokemon adventure with the titular pocket monster of your chosen game tagging along for the ride, and as always, you have eight gyms, one Pokemon League, and a criminal organization to take down. This is Pokemon 101. There isn't a whole lot to say about this story-wise. If you've played a Pokemon game before, then you've seen this story a few times, but for what it's worth, fans familiar with the original Pokemon games will be surprised by a handful of altered story beats and world details. And that's kinda cool. The world itself is brought to life in the same 3D style as the last few handheld titles, but everything just seems a little bit brighter and more colourful. Probably the biggest new change to the visuals for Pokemon Let's Go is the addition of more Pokemon outside of battle. Like, everywhere. Pokemon hanging out with their trainers, Pokemon hanging out with you, finally, and even wild Pokemon visibly running around, and all of these Pokemon have their own walk animations and behaviours and everything. It is a bit of a shame then that the game's audio is still so firmly stuck in the past. Don't get me wrong, the game's soundtrack is an awesome orchestral take on that of the original games, but why do the majority of Pokemon still have these cries that sound like someone recorded a second or two of a dial-up modem trying to connect? Pikachu and Eevee got brand new cries and sound clips, so why not the rest of the Pokemon? It's not like the game has all 800 or so monsters to work on after all. That's right, Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee have paired the available Pokedex down from the staggering levels it got to with Pokemon Sun and Moon Ultra to something far more manageable, and beyond 99% of Pokemon still sounding like us, I'm kind of relieved to see this change come about. But this isn't the only effort that the Let's Go games have made to make the Pokemon series more approachable than it has been for years, and it really is. From removing held items from the equation to paring down the available moveset in its entirety, Pokemon Let's Go really does make the experience a little less intimidating than the usual fare provides. But there are some unfortunate casualties from this effort to simplify the game. First and most noticeably are the changes made to wild Pokemon encounters and actually catching new Pokemon. Now, I'm a huge fan of not having to deal with Pokemon's random battles, so being able to pick and choose which wild Pokemon you want to engage with because you can physically see them in the wild is a welcome change in my mind. But actually battling and wearing down these Pokemon before you catch them is no longer a mechanic, aside from the odd legendary battle. No, instead Pokemon Let's Go chooses to emulate the mobile experience by having wild encounters boil down to throwing Pokeballs at monsters until they just happen to be caught. There's no strategy or skill involved since you can't weaken wild Pokemon before capture, and throwing the ball in any skillful manner, which the game denotes as great or excellent, doesn't seem to actually matter. By this, I mean I can throw 10 Pokeballs at a Pokemon and have 9 excellent throws and one average one, and the average one seems just as likely to be successful. It's a strange approach to take. There are plenty of other mechanics that are nowhere to be seen as well, and whether these are good or bad changes will ultimately vary from player to player. Breeding, for instance, is out, meaning that egg moves are also nowhere to be found, while getting Pokemon with the best stats will require a lot of chain catching, which is honestly kind of boring, but made easier by the fact that you can, you know, see Pokemon out in the wild. HM moves such as Surf, Fly, and Cut are also changed from the originals, and now more closely resemble the mechanics featured in Pokemon Sun and Moon, except now instead of a variety of Pokemon accomplishing these out-of-battle tasks, your titular partner does the work instead. As with Sun and Moon, this takes the focus of party building away from utility, which is convenient, I guess, but now you can just have your entire Pokemon collection with you at all times without ever touching a storage PC, so it doesn't even really matter. Yep, you just have a Pokemon storage box in your bag, which allows you to catch and carry as many Pokemon as you damn well please. Again, this is really streamlining the formula, but being able to just switch out Pokemon wherever you want, whenever you want, makes the game feel easily abusable. Like, say you made it through a gym with only one Pokemon still conscious and no healing items. Fuck it, just switch your entire team out mid-gym. Freedom is great and all, but without some sort of limitation, it's hard to be challenged. And honestly, the most challenging aspect of Pokemon Let's Go may be wrestling with the motion controls when you're trying to catch new Pokemon. Unless you're playing in handheld mode, catching Pokemon all boils down to making a throwing action with your controller of choice. Simple, in theory, but I found that I was wasting so many Pokeballs because my throws would just go careening off screen for no reason. It's a novel idea that wears thinner and thinner as the game goes on, but if you're gonna do it, you may as well use the Pokeball controller, which actually has a nice weight to it, in addition to having strong rumble, sound, and lighting features. It's a gimmick, but it's a gimmick that hasn't lost its charm on me yet, despite me hating motion controls. It is a bit silly that there's no non-motion control option for catching, though. 
I suppose the last thing that I need to talk about is the battling, which is fine. It's Pokemon. It's turn-based, elemental, rock-paper-scissors most of the time, and generally speaking, none of the trainers you'll come up against have more of a strategy than use the most effective move until you win, so there isn't much in terms of challenge until you hit the credits. I must say, the post-game is pretty strong though, as the world spawns 150 or so master trainers who must be challenged using a single Pokemon that they're the master of, and must be beaten with no items used. If you're looking for a fun but reasonable challenge, then this might be right up your alley. With all that said, Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee are good. While I really do appreciate these remakes cutting loose a lot of the extras that would later complicate the series, I feel like some of the mechanics that were chosen to be cut would have been fine if kept in, battling to weaken wild Pokemon and breeding Pokemon of your own come to mind in particular. But on the whole, the games are interesting and fun retellings of an all-time classic and a great stepping off point for newcomers. Also, it has Pokemon Go connectivity, so if you're someone who got big into that, and assuming your phone is supported, then you can take full advantage of your mobile Pokedex, which is cool. Poké fans new and old should definitely check this one out. 